Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel for more on uh, painting Red Riding Hood. The Nuts Planet 75mm figure. Now where did we get to last time? Let's get the box out of the way. And take a look see. Well we've got, we've made some progress. Um, we'd finished off most of the leather work. I made a bit more progress on some of the metal work and today I think we're going to look at uh, getting some of the skin tones done and for some reason it's trying to focus on the base rather than her face there we go so yeah let's get going with adding some different skin tones now here's where leaving all my uh, previously used paints out on the bench comes in useful because I now know exactly which paint I used on the flesh and every other part I'm just going to give my uh, <coughs> paint palette a bit of a clean out and I'll put it just in shot there uh, originally what we used for the base colour on the flesh was, <coughs> surprise surprise, Game Air Flesh, just the flesh colour. Now as we're going to be mainly looking to highlight, rather than bring out any shadows, we'll add a dollop of that. And a, I'll add a dollop of the pale flesh. So we can get that to actually focus and read. There we go. Now you can do this with a wet palette, but how best to put it? I've not quite got that mastered yet or figured out, so I'm old school. I just mix my paints together. There's not a huge amount of difference between doing it like this and doing it with a wet palette. But, um, as I might have mentioned before, I'm a bit shade blind. So telling them between two slightly different shades of colour, my eyes or my brain just doesn't do it. Um, to the extent where you get the green on green splinter camo on a German plane, it just looks one shade of green to me because there's not enough tonal difference between the two. Quick swig. Uh, that's better. Now, first things first, you're going to need to mix a lighter shade. That'll take some of the flat. Actually, quite a bit. Get rid of most of the excess out of the brush. Add a bit of pale. There we go, that's pretty well mixed in. Just wipe the excess out of the brush for now. And add a little, little drop of water to it, I think, just to thin the paint a little more. Let's just try and keep it at least semi-translucent. Um, That's about right. Picked a bit of crud up in my brush, always a bit of old paint falling out. Now, as I said, I'm no skilled figure painter, so I'm just going to be almost dry brushing, but with a wet brush, if that makes sense. <laughs> So there's a minimum amount of paint on the brush and it's quite thin. What is there is spread throughout the bristles so it goes fairly translucent and you apply it gently. And you spread it out well. I 
obviously leaving it in shadow areas with the original flesh tones. This is so with the flat, uh, the basic flesh, and a wash of the GW or Citadel Reichland flesh shade. Really should have given this brush a really should have given this brush a damn good clean out first. I'm gonna miss all sorts of gunk falling out of the bristles. Oh well, never mind. Wish you'll, wish you'll soldier on. Yeah, all sorts of black gunk coming out of it. I will give it a quick swish out in the water. Probably is black from painting tyres on there. Messerschmitt or something, that'll do. Again, because it's quite warm, we'll just add some extra water to the paint because it is drying out fairly rapidly. Adding it fairly gingerly, so we don't want to add too much. We can always add more, but it's a lot harder to take it away once you've added it. This is almost like adding a glaze rather than painting. You see there's quite a lot of paint in the brush, but it's spread all the way up the bristles. Which is probably the wrong way of doing it, but hey, it's the way I do it, so it's the way I do it. Uh, do I have any topics for discussion? Ooh, I'm going to have to think about that. Things that have come up of late in the modelling world. It's been fairly drama free of late actually. Um, well there was one guy to come bridge with the fact that I've got a long pinky nail. Apparently it's gross and disgusting. But meh. My fingernails I've grown however long I want. They come in useful being a bit a bit longer anyway. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush again. The paint has almost dried out already. It's been, it has been um, Rather unseasonably warm here in the east of the UK the last week or so. Um, kind of temperatures we'd more expect in the summer than sort of we're talking July, August kind of temperatures rather than early May, which is when this is. I need to thin that out a little. Just blending out where I added a little too much paint. So because it's water based acrylic, should be able to blend it out okay with a wet brush. There's more crud coming out of this brush. I really should clean them more often. So as a first round of highlights. We're getting there, it's the top of the arm and the fingers, actually we'll 
switch back to the larger brush re-wet the paint try and make sure I'm holding her in shot as I do this Crease in the uh, wrist and just across the top of the fingers. And the top of the thumb. A little more across the very top of the bust. I don't recall if I've mentioned this before, but someone did say to me recently, why do I usually tend to paint pervy female figures? Um, although, in this case I wouldn't consider her pervy. There's, it's just a female, a fantasy female. You know, there's no nudity or anything horrific going on not like some I've seen um, my theory is if I'm going to look at something for a few hours especially if you know, I'm going to be staring at it closely and painting it I'd rather it was an attractive female than some burly bloke <laughs> you know call me old fashioned but I'd rather look at a pretty girl than a big muscular macho man. There we go. Ah, that's purely it. So now we can go and go <coughs> go back over any places we feel that might need it and go lighter again or even lighter and lighter although the trick is to stop before they end up looking like one of the walking dead before they have a similar type of tan to me yeah, might be able to see a bit better and get the sun on and off so you see we've picked out the sort of musculature and the shape and the high points where the sun would hit, or the light, right, and left the other bits in shadow. And I'm thinking, that's pretty much there. Don't think she needs an awful lot more done. Um, yes, so what I shall do now... is decide what colour eyes to give her. Do I go brown? Do I go blue? Do I go green? Hmm. I think I'm going to go green. So we need a green paint. Also I've got plenty of green paints as I normally paint tanks. But I think Russian green is probably not a good colour for an eye. Especially not on a figure like this. So let's find. Let's find. There we go. Is that? How's that? Yeah. yeah. Still paint. Quite why I'm shaking it up so much when I only need literally. A tiny, tiny amount. Hmm. Yeah, I do. So. Let's move that out of the way. So we don't need that for now. Pop the bubble. I'm 
and this is where I would want to put my geek goggles on and I'm going to try and keep my head out of shot so if I bring her near the bottom we should be okay oh, hang on. see better without those on um, something's a restaurant it's hold her level so I can so she's not moving about and I can position the brush precisely. And it's that warm by the time I got there, the paint's dried. If you're unsure when it comes to doing the eyes, which I am there, so I'm going to switch to a smaller brush if I can find it without my glasses on. That's the irony, isn't it? I take my glasses off so I can see better, and then I can't find the bloody brush. Oh, shut up, phone. There it is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just extremely short-sighted, so... Without my glasses, anything up to about six or eight inches away, I can see really well. Anything more than a foot away is just a total blur. Right, let's try this again. at the moment but I think I've just about managed to not make her look completely cross-eyed if it's going to focus, come on, uh, let's see how close we have to get, oh well, it's seeing her face now so it's focusing on that, there we go, looking vaguely human, I just got to put a little black dot in the middle of each of those and they're done, the hair, I'm not entirely sure if I need to do anything with that, as it's in shade and the way I painted it with the dark red over the um a, uh, what was it? it was the the uh, model air hull red which is a airbrush ready paint so really quite thin that one is and um because the hair was already zenith all highlighted with the black and the grey and the white so because the paint's thin and it's gone on fairly translucently it, was, it has left highlights there so don't think I'm going to have to do too much there um, I'm thinking we're just pretty much down to metal work now so A quick swiggle up. Oh, pardon me, and a burp. And yeah, thinking we're just on finish off the sword and the other little daggery thing. Which I might give another wash to pick out the scratches a bit more and the dings in it. 
then add more highlight to the crotch protector or the womb guard, whatever it's supposed to be, and gets it on. Final highlighting of the gold and the silver stuff. So I shall see you in the next part for some of that. Enjoy your modelling. Have fun. Peace out. That way. Rock on. Bye bye.